It's mid-August and out in the countryside it's one of the busiest months of the year. With the local farmers harvesting their summer crops, the wild deer are being displaced, pushed out of the fields that have provided them so much security through the summer months. And that means it's the perfect time to hunt wild game. In this instance, we're hunting fallow prickets. I'm out in my huntsman with a good friend and excellent shot for company. I'm out here today with my good friend Alan Hayward, the general who taught me everything I know about stalking and shooting and how to make the most out of a deer. So it's a real privilege to be out with Alan today. And today's a very exciting day. You know, we're in August, so the fallow bucks are in season, but also, you know, the harvest's coming off now. This, the, you can sense, it's like autumn's approaching, it's harvest time, and that moves the deer around. The deer have been comfortable in these long crops all summer. They don't get disturbed at all. And now, as the crops come off, they start to move, and you're much more likely to see deer. On the local farmer's request, we're out and about looking for fallow deer. So we pull off the main road and head into deeper country, surveying the nearby woodland as we go for signs of deer. We haven't been driving that long before we spot a gorgeous fallow doe. And where there's one, there's always more. It's a good omen and we decide to park up in the nearby woodland and see how our luck runs. As always, it's about keeping noise to a minimum from now on. If the deer is spooked, we stand no chance of success. As well as being a good mate, Alan is an incredibly good shot, unbelievably good, and he's always great to have him on board. I trust his instincts, and we've not gone at all far before we're drawn to a disturbance in the woods. Using my Swarovski rangefinders, I check it out, but with the evening fast approaching, it's just too dark to spot movement. We decide to cut through the woods and follow our instincts. No sooner do we emerge from the trees, I immediately spot a small gang of fallow deer grazing in the adjacent field. And then the last one, last one, the buck. The last one's a bricket. Do you want my shoulder? Hang on. Joe, just stay there. Stay down. You got him. Gotcha. What a shot. God. Well, as often happens when you're shooting fallow deer in these fields, that all happened in a minute. We popped out. There were three does and a fourth doe, and the fourth doe tend to be a pricket at spikes. And uh, Alan shot it. It's dead, yeah? He's dead. Okay. The fourth, the third tram line out. Good girl, Millie. Stay. Whew. So, one to I see and just over that braille. What do you think? About 180 yards? Okay, so we'll go up and then walk down the tram line. See that crest? Yep. He's yep. on line with the crest. He is, yes. Third tram line. When, this is crucial when you're trying to find a deer in a crop. You need to w relate to something. Tram lines are the way you do it. So now we're going to walk down it and then let Millie find the deer. Okay. You know what, Alan? I think I'll get the row sack and then we can carry him out. Okay. Good girl. Good girl, Millie. Good girl. Well done. What's this? 199. We reckon on my rangefinder that's 190 to the corner up there. 202 yards. Uh -huh. This deer was standing looking at Alan, and the only thing that was exposed was the top of his neck and his head. And there is the entry. Which I think makes you, Mr. Hayward, like the best shot in Britain. <laughs> lucky shot. <laughs> Not lucky. That was no luck involved at all. And when a deer's looking straight at you, because that had heard us crashing through those bushes, and those deer had all stopped, they'd heard us as we popped out. I don't think they saw us. Do you, Alan? I think he was inquisitive, because the other three, the three does ran on. He stopped and stared up at us. He wondered what was going on. Maybe he thought it was another buck or something. I don't know, but he looked straight at us. Even when you tried to put out your safety catch off? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you noticed that. <laughs> It's a really heavy pricket, perfect for eating, a fabulous example of a fallow deer. We drag the animal into clearer ground, get it out of the crop and check it over. It's in great condition, so it's time to grallock the animal before transporting it home in the Huntsman. As the beautiful August evening finally draws to a close, 
It's been a fantastically successful hunt, just perfect in fact, and I'm already thinking about all the meals I can make with this wonderfully tasty animal. I'm gonna get some Parmesan on here. Just shave off the front face like that. And those schnitzels look amazing. Don't forget, you can watch more of my episodes from Mike's Wild Kitchen on YouTube just by clicking on the links below.